why is DevOps not adopted? Uh, not just the cultural change, but the technology changes. And then uh, let's dig into the, the second part of that question later, which is um, how do we, oh, the second part of the question, sorry, is the second part of the question is essentially how do you uh, handle when someone comes on the platform, they may not have very many DevOps players in their cast, right? Um, are you augmenting their staff with just software or do you also have like, um, a support contract or you kind of, I mean, am I getting, maybe that's a cat out of the bag and you guys want to go that direction and you don't have to answer that question. But, but it seems, it seems to me like uh, that is like a, the next logical extension for me. I'm asking yeah, so, too many questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I think to answer that question, we want to, you know, one of the things that we understood about ourselves and, and, it, and it happens with a bit of, you know, introspection about what we want to do also, right? Uh, and we want to remain, I, I was always a services company, right? Um, we are a product-led services company. And once we realized who we are, that we want to help companies build great products by offering a service to build that product. And over the years, we built multiple accelerators, whether it is within compliance, whether it is design system language, whether it is a microservices library or, or, or a generator that we created. We created all these products for ourselves to provide a better service. Aurox was also an amalgamation of all these products uh, that we created, all these accelerators and third-party tools, etc., to actually create a DevOps engine or, a, or like we got, like what we like to call it, a software factory, a DevOps software factory, right? Uh, that we are able to create. Um, again, creating it for ourselves to provide a better service. The, the, the few examples that we've had where companies have onboarded it as a product to use for themselves has come out of relationships we have with the senior management or with the founders or with the uh, technologists with that company. But we've not really gone out to answer your question is why are people not knocking at our doors to use our ops? Uh, is the reason that we've never sold our ops as a product. We, we've always looked at it as a service. And the people who know it and, and who have actually discovered the power or the benefit of our ops, right, um, are able to ask us, saying, hey, can we, can we also use this? Can you, can you help us to set this up? And we've done that. So uh, those, those examples are, are, are one and off uh, in few between. And I don't know in the future whether, whether we open up uh, our ops as a product or not. But at least today, we are very content and very happy providing a service and, and using our ops to, to deliver uh, uh, that service. So I think, and, and a lot of times, um, you know, as organizations look at cultural change, and that's where the consulting side also comes into our business, uh, is the is how do we kind of consult organizations to get the culture right? How do we consult organizations to start thinking in, in design thinking uh, type of methodologies? Because, you know, like you said, engines and, and technologies and tool chains and processes are one thing. People thinking, mindset, ideologies are another, and and unless you marry both of them, it becomes very difficult. And we, we work with customers where while we are using this to build a custom a custom product for them, um, when we are actually transferring that product back for them to kind of uh, take over, uh, there is a huge consulting and an advisory role that Anupam and the co-founder Nilesh Ratnaparki often have to play with those companies to ensure that that is seamless and to ensure that it continues in the manner that it's doing. To answer your second question, can we handle thousands of customers? Yes. Have we have we ever gone out trying to get thousands of customers? Not yet. Will we? Maybe. But for right now, we are a services company, and, and we and we are glad and we are proud to be a services company using this product to enable that. Anupam, those are those are good answers. Do you have anything to add to that, Anupam? No, no, no. I, I think Anurag just stole my words. <laughs> he covered the entire story. <laughs> no, it's great. It's, you have a lot of alignment with your with your culture internally. So uh, I will just add into this is uh, we've always uh, approached companies. In fact, we have gone to companies where they were uh, they had DevOps implementation internally. Uh, they wanted us to review those implementations and the processes and methodologies uh, and really help them because something was not working right for them, even though they had DevOps implemented. And that's how we've also consulted them, consulted them on those lines. Uh, if you look at our ops as a product, you asked like, are we selling it as a product? So uh, as Anurudh answered, we are not selling it as a full, full fledged product, but our ops is kind of a Kickstarter. If you want to get quickly started on the DevOps journey and you are worried about, 
uh, will we implement the right DevOps methodologies? Or are you concerned about that? That's where our ops adds a value because it comes from the house or from the company who themselves uh, develop and create products for other customers day in and day out. And hence we understand our roots are into product development. We understand those problems to the core. We understand the problem of my developer or my tester. I understand my own problem sitting on the position uh, in the business role and, and understanding the outcome. Are we getting the business to the business outcome? And hence, uh, it's kind of, I would put it this way, it's a, it's a very strong Kickstarter and it will help you accelerate immediately on the DevOps journey. That's how the product.